morning, good morning. It is your boy, Jacob. We'll back at it again for Not Many Noble. Reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is October 21st today. The big 2-1. 294 days we have been reading the Bible together. And we've got 71 days left this year. It is the International Day of the Nacho. That is a great, that is a great way to say it. International Day of the Nacho. National Apple Day. National. I wanted to say apple pie for some reason, but it's National Apple Day. Count Your Buttons Day. National Reptile Awareness Day. Oh, I'm aware. I am aware there is a reptile staring back at me. National Pumpkin Day. All right. How about that? I think there might always oh, that international. Oh, no. No, maybe that was yesterday. Nope, that International Sloth Day. Hmm. International Sloth Day. Maybe that's why I'm feeling a little sluggish. A little bit sluggish today. We're <laughs> reading the Bible through, of course, when the World English Bible Translation got to the New Testament and decided that we were going to do each gospel separately. We read Mark, we read Matthew, now we're reading John, and we're in chapter 11. Now a certain man was sick. Lazarus from Bethany of the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who had anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. The sisters therefore sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he for whom you have great affection is sick. But when Jesus heard it, he said, The sickness is not to death, but for the glory of God, that God's Son may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When therefore he heard that he was sick, he stayed two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let's go into Judea again. The disciples asked him, uh, rabbi? (laughs) I don't know if they said it like that, but rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you. Are you going there again? (laughs) I'm confused. See, I'm confused. They're trying to kill you over there. They looking to kill you. And that's where we're going? Okay. Jesus answered, aren't there 12 hours of daylight? If a man walks in the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walks in the night, he stumbles because the light isn't in him. He said these things. And after that, he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going so that I may awake him out of sleep. Pretty much it doesn't matter who's trying to kill me or not. When it's time to do the right thing, I'm going to do the right thing. It's daytime. Daytime is hay time. And I'm going to go make that hay. The disciples therefore said, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. And then Jesus uh, struck his face with his palm. Ugh. No, he didn't. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he spoke of taking rest and sleep. So Jesus said it plainly to them, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> Lazarus is dead, buddy. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there so that you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go to him. Thomas, therefore, who was called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let's go also, that we may die with him. (sighs) You still ain't getting it, huh? (laughs) So when Jesus came, he found that he had been in the tomb four days already. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about 15 stadia away. Many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Then when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary stayed in the house. Therefore Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will still live even if he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, God's son who comes into the world. When she had said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, the teacher is here and is calling you. When she heard this, she arose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and were consoling her when they saw Mary, that she rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Therefore, when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. 
When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews weeping who came with her, he groaned in the spirit and troubled and said, and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They told him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. The Jews therefore said, See how much affection he had for him. Some of them said, Couldn't this man who opened the eyes of him who was blind have also kept this man from dying? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, and who was a bit more practical of the two, right? Uh, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Like, it's going to be ripe in there, bro. If we roll that stone back, it's going to be, woo, and I got no uh, Vicks Vapo Rub to put underneath my nose. I got nothing. Jesus said to her, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see God's glory? So they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you listened to me. I know that you always listen to me, but because of the multitude standing around, I say this, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. He who was dead came out, bound hand and foot with wrappings. His face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said to them, free him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. The chief priests, therefore, and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What are we doing? For this man does many signs. If we leave him alone like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. That's, uh, that was their motivation. I'm not going, I'm not going to lose my spot. I'm not going to lose my spot. This Jesus dude is going to have to die because I'm not losing my spot. It is interesting, though, that he's raising the dead and they're like, yeah, I got him. I can take him. <laughs> I can take him. I'm like, uh, OK, you got him. You got him. But a certain one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is advantageous for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation not perish. Now, he didn't say this of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but that he might also gather together into one the children of God who were scattered abroad. So from that day forward, they took counsel that they might put him to death, which is kind of a weird thing, right? Like It's, it's almost like they knew what they were doing but didn't know what they were doing. Hmm. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but departed from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim. He stayed there with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand. Many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they sought for Jesus and spoke with one another as they stood in the temple. What do you think? That he isn't coming to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had commanded that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it, that they might seize him. What I find interesting, what I find interesting is this, right, the shortest verse, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Why? Why was he weeping? Why did he weep when he knew what he was going to do? He still, though he knew the outcome, he still entered into the pain and the suffering and the emotion of the people around him, weeping with those who weep, mourning with those who mourn. Isn't that fascinating? He didn't step in all big timing like I would have done, but like, yo, chill. Why you guys weep? Why y'all weeping? Y'all got nothing to worry about. I'm here. I'm here. It's your boy. Jake Goble's here. This is going to be hot. I got it. I already got you. I got y'all. Chill. Enough with the crying. Hold my beer. Watch this. Let me roll my sleeves up and get to work here for the fala. That's probably what I would be inclined to do. But he is not like us. He enters into their mourning. He enters into their pain. He enters into their misery. And then takes it away. Incredible absolutely incredible. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there. 
Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Therefore Mary took a pound of ointment of pure nard, very precious, and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. Then Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, one of his disciples who would betray him, said, Why wasn't this ointment sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? Now he said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and having the money box used to steal what was put into it. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial, for you always have the poor with you, but you don't always have me. Yeah, you know, you don't want to read into it too much, but like these organizations dedicated to the eradication of poverty, we talked about that a little bit, right? raising the poverty or eradication. We had that, there was a day, I think we talked about it real quick. I guess it depends on what your level of poverty is or what your definition of poverty is, whether you can eradicate it or not or raise it or not. But there's always going to be poor people. There will always be poor people. Sometimes decisions they make, right? Like, "Mm, I don't want to make as much money. My goal is not to make as much money as possible. I'm going to pursue other things that don't have monetary value attached to them, or they don't have monetary compensation attached to them. And this, he was a thief. And there's a lot of them out there who, 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 who uh, portray themselves as those who care about justice, equity, poverty, but they're not. They care about them. They care about them and they're thieves. And they take money and they spend it on their pleasures. They spend it on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. There's a lot more out there, I think, than we know. Probably a lot more out there, I think, than those who actually care about the poor. That's what I'm guessing. That's what I'm guessing. A large crowd, therefore, of the Jews learned that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests conspired to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. He was just dead. He just got raised from the dead. How? You, like, it doesn't even make no sense to me. Be like, well, I'm going to go kill this dude again. Uh, yeah, and I hope that the person that raised him from the dead... Hello, miraculous. I guess I'm hoping that he doesn't raise him from the dead again or else I'm going to have to keep killing him every day. I don't know the thought process here. It doesn't make no sense to me. They're like, I would be a scurred. That's what I would be. Hey, there's a guy over here. He raises people from the dead. Oh, I'm going to go kill him. Wait, are you not listening? Did you not listen to me? Why would you not think that he could raise himself from the dead? If he could raise people from the dead, if he has power over death, what do you think you are going to do to him? That makes no sense. On the next day, a great multitude had come to the feast. When they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Psalm 118, 25, 26. Jesus, having found a young donkey, sat on it. As it is written, don't be afraid, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king comes sitting on a donkey's colt. Zechariah 9.9. His disciples didn't understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. The multitude, therefore, was, or that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead was testifying about it. For this cause also the multitude went and met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, see how you accomplish Nothing. Behold, the whole world has gone after him. Now there were certain Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. These therefore came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn Andrew came with Philip, and they told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Most certainly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains by itself alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life will lose it. He who hates his life in this world will keep it to eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. Where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this time. But I came to this time for this cause. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came out of the sky saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. 
Therefore the multitude who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice hasn't come for my sake, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the prince of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. But he said this, signifying by what kind of death he should die. The multitude answered him, We have heard out of the law that the Christ remains forever. Isaiah 9, 7, Daniel 2, 44, Isaiah 53, 8. How do you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus therefore said to them, Yet a little while the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, that darkness doesn't overtake you. He who walks in the darkness doesn't know where he's going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become children of light. Jesus said these things, and he departed and hid himself from them. But though he had done so many signs before them, yet they didn't believe in him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Isaiah 53, 1. For this cause they couldn't believe, for Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes, and he has hardened their heart, lest they should see with their eyes, and perceive with their heart, and would turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah 6, 10. Isaiah said these things when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Isaiah 6, 1. Therefore, I'm sorry, nevertheless, even many of the rulers believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they didn't confess it so that they wouldn't be put out of the synagogue, for they loved men's praise more than God's praise. Jesus cried out and said, whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. He who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me may not remain in the darkness. If anyone listens to my sayings and doesn't believe, I don't judge him. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and doesn't receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word that I spoke will judge him in the last day. For I spoke not from myself, but the father who sent me, he gave a commandment that I, what I should say and what I should speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. The things, therefore, which I speak, even as the Father has said to me, so I speak. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for keeping it for us, preparing it for us, maintaining it for us. We want to walk in the light. We do not want to be those who see but don't believe. Um, We perceive with our hearts, not turn. We want to be those who believe the report, who believe what we read who walk in the light as you are in the light. We want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to be where he is. We want to serve him. We do not want to love our life so much so that we refuse to lose it for your sake here in this world. Give us grace to have the right perspective here about money, about life, about effort, about service. Where are we going? What are we doing? pray that this constantly taking in your word, taking in your word, taking in your word would change our thoughts, change our mind, change our hearts, change our actions to glorify and serve you. In Christ's name, amen. All right, y'all show notes are at notmanynoble.com. You can get a hold of me. Email notmanynoble at gmail.com if you'd like to. Prayer request, whatever else you want to send to me. Go ahead. Thank you so much for listening and I will catch you tomorrow.